Hey guys, Trent here coming at you with another video. So for today's video, I got some sales to show you. I'll do some sales processing. Uh, got a few items I picked up I can show you, and we'll do a quick talk about is there room to make money from the thrift store in 2020. So let's check it out. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. My name is Trent. I'm a part-time reseller on eBay. I do it for fun and profit, and I take you along for the journey. So please hit that subscribe button for more great videos in the future. So here's a cool toy I haven't shown you yet that I picked up. It was $2.99 in the, the thrift store. It's an Imagine X toy. It's the Mummy King. It's got some pretty cool action features. Uh, it has There's a pedestal here where a figure stands, but I, I don't have the figure, but that's okay. This is a little bit of an uncommon toy. Uh, I think it sells for $20 to $25 pretty easily is what I've looked whenever it comes to comps. So not only do the arms move, but uh, it's got this action feature. You push down here, and then this pops open, and you can expose the mummy face. And then, then after that, if you twist this thing on the top, it has a pretty big action feature where that pops down, and the eyes bug out and everything. So it's a pretty cool little toy. I wish I had all the stuff to go with it, but saw it at the thrift store, $2.99. It's the kind of stuff I enjoy selling. It's fun to interact with, you know, even, you know, you don't have to be a kid and play with the toys, but you can have fun, you know, uh, learning about them, uh, photographing them and everything, and cleaning them and all that stuff. So it's a way to mix, you know, hobbies with part-time reselling and have a good time and make a, you know, and make profit, fun and profit, like I always like to say in my, in my intro. So that leads into my topic is, you know, I hear, I see a lot of videos come out where people are saying, you know, is there money to make, is there money to be made in the thrift store? Uh, I think a lot of times they're focusing on goodwill. I will point that out. You know, is there money to be made in goodwill? Because they're talking about inflated prices that goodwill has now. So uh, for me, yes, uh, not as often as other thrift stores, I will say that, but I go in Goodwill, you know, it's just one of the many potential stops I can make and uh, potentially source some some good items and even good stuff for myself, you know, here and there. <laughs> so speaking of sourcing good stuff for myself, I found a couple of Blu-rays in uh, the thrift store. So I got a sealed Young Guns. I remember watching this one back in the day. A great classic, you know, has a lot of uh, 80s stars in it. Pretty cool movie, Young Guns. And it was sealed. And one I didn't expect to find so soon, uh, Ready Player One. So uh, this is a movie, it's a pretty recent movie, but it has to do with, it has a lot of nostalgia stuff in it, my understanding from the 80s and 90s. I haven't seen it. I look forward to seeing that. I was really happy to see that in the thrift store for $2.99. So I got Ready Player One Blu-ray. That's pretty cool to pick up in the thrift store. So if you're new to reselling or if you're thinking about it and you see videos online talking about, you know, prices are getting out of control at the thrift store or at Goodwill, uh, you just got to keep in mind that you have to build your, you got to build your knowledge base. And it's not just about what to sell, it's where to go to source the items, right? So you've got yard sales, you've got thrift stores, you've got uh, uh, yard sale, garage sale, right? Estate sales kind of a kind of a similar thing uh a lot of times here in california people will call us uh, an estate sale it is just a they'll call it an estate sale and it's just a garage sale uh so an, a true estate sale is where someone is selling off the in, interior of their estate you know like you go in and start shopping in their house and pretty much everything has a price tag a little bit different than your garage sale where they drag everything out of what they intend to sell depending on where you live uh garage sales and yard sales estate sales are going to be the absolute best way to source when we're talking about going out and sourcing you know stuff in the wild i'm not talking about wholesaling or anything like that uh drop shipping you know uh, personally i don't really deal with that because i am a part-timer and uh with my sourcing and me being a collector of things as well so i'm not just going out to only source merchandise to sell you know i like to find treasures for myself too and my wife does as well so if you can get on board with it being a hobby, uh, it can really get you motivated because you're killing two birds with one stone and you're having a great time. But again, back to Goodwill and thrift stores, uh, there's many thrift stores and you have to find them. Uh, of course, that's situational. Not every single person has the same opportunities as the other person because of where you live. But 
uh, what you have to do is you have to develop uh, a routine of where your potential sources are, the good thrift stores, uh, and from there, as you spend the time in the thrift stores, you will develop a habit of items that you will end up kind of going for, you know, like, wow, I keep finding great shoes at this thrift store that sell for 40, 50 bucks at a minimum. I just keep finding them. So you can kind of get into your specialty, your niche that way. Okay. So for me, uh, I transitioned, I started out reselling on eBay by, well, first off, I sold off my Magic the Gathering collection that I had several thousands of dollars worth of paper Magic the Gathering cards, right? So that's what initially kickstarted me into selling on eBay. And then from there, I branched out into the, into the thrift stores and garage sales, but mainly the thrift store at first because, uh, you know, the all the merchandise is there and you just got to go through it, right? And it was closed. Um, I started right around the time that uh, Rake and Profit started doing his eBay reselling as well. It was around 2000, it was in 2012. And back then, you know, there was some YouTube channels, uh, doing reselling break and profit was one of them that started up and he was focusing on clothes and coincidentally that seemed like yeah that seemed like a good place to start so i kind of started alongside as well and i quickly realized that i kind of enjoyed selling jeans more than the other shirts and all that stuff because because the shirts are even more difficult to deal with and then jeans are in my opinion any clothes it, i've kind of progressed beyond that in my opinion because i it to me it was more of a hassle to deal with so I learned a few things along the way. Um, I picked up Guitar Hero controllers and sold those. I picked up shoes and sold those because I found that I could find a pair of shoes for $5 to $7 and they would sell for $50, $60, sometimes over $100 if it was that pair of uh, suede uh, Skechers shape-ups that at one time I sold a pair for over $100. Uh, now they probably won't sell for that much, but uh, that's the key is you've got to... You've got to develop your sources. I think that's what it comes down to. Even in 2020, 2021, and beyond, uh, if goodwill is too, if prices you out of the market, you know, you just got to find all the other thrift stores. You got to visit more than one. You got to hit the garage sales religiously. Uh, so I think that's the key. Uh, I don't think and and you know, cherry pick. Go into goodwill. Do a quick scan. You know, if the prices are overpriced. Uh, I went to Goodwill, I showed you I was overpaying for a lot of stuff, but I still made decent profits because the items were super quality. And in fact, I found in my recent video, I showed you, I found that, uh, uh, what brand was it? I forgot the brand of it, but it was that VCR DVD recorder it sold for 150 bucks really quick. Plus shipping. I made like $180 sale on that paid $10 for it at Goodwill. So, and I was had the same mindset too. I'll mention that whenever I went into the thrift store, I was thinking, I'm you know I'm not going to find anything, and these prices are ridiculous. A pair of shoes is like fourteen ninety nine or something, you know, and I was or twelve ninety nine on the cheap end. So in my opinion, uh, yes, there's money to be made at Goodwill and the thrift store in two thousand twenty and beyond. You've just got to you can't put all your eggs in one basket, as they say. You have to develop uh, your you have to develop an arsenal of potential sourcing locations. So I hope that helps. Uh, let's check out some sales. All right, let's ship out some sales. All right, I sold these Doc Martens. Um, these are, they're called Leah or something like that. Safety toe steel shoe slip resistant. Uh, steel toed safety shoes for women. And then, they have this feature where you can fold them down and yeah, something like that. And then you buckle them down. You can make them low top, kind of like low ankle tops if you want. But uh, these I picked up at the uh, uh, Goodwill auction. I think I paid opening bid of $9.99. Sat on them for a long time, had a lot of interest watching them and stuff. Finally took a best offer. Uh, total price paid by the customer, $46.61. I think I might see about just utilizing one of my priority mail uh, shoe bo shoe boxes. So we'll do that. Because I think the rate was 
cheap enough to where priority mail would have been the most reasonable for me. And I think these things fit just perfectly. I'm pretty sparing with tape. You don't have to be. Tape's relatively one of your cheapest expenses. You can get a case of it for 30, 40 bucks. It'll last you a long, long time. Three point five seven. So we're gonna call it a four pounder. All right, got that one. All right, sold this uh, three pack of Nerf Rival uh, Apollos. These are the ones my wife picked up for me from the thrift store. Three pack each with their magazine. Uh, this Rival set of three here sold for forty three oh nine total, paid by the customer. And these were, you know, paid. We paid two dollars a piece for these. So, all right, sixteen by twelve by eight. One of the boxes I spend the most, uh, one of the boxes I get the most from the uh, eBay, eBay store. Yeah, these are going to be pretty good. Got some packing, some bubble wrap here. I'll put a layer down here. Number one. Put a cushioning layer in between each one. Five pounder. Put R for rival, five R. Five pounds and it's the rivals. All right, sold another lot. The Strife and the, uh, what's this called? Barrel break, barrel break. I offer 20 darts for that one. So those two blasters with 20 darts sold for total paid by the customer, $39.71. Here's a smaller than a 16 by 12 by eight box I'm gonna try out. I think it should work pretty good for it. Already got some uh, packing material in there too. This is pretty good stuff though, whoops. Eh, whatever, I'm just going to use this stuff. Yeah, that fits. We'll build that. Put that in there. Sneak my magazine and my darts down in there. Here's a couple of air pockets that might make it perfect. Got some extra material for later. Yeah, that ain't moving around too much. Cut off some, cut off some old labels. Yep, we're in business. Okay, 
This is a 16 by 10 by 8 box. That's a pretty nice size. Gonna be a four pounder. Four. This is the S for strife, ST for strife. Okay, and then here, this lot here, got the Demolisher 2 in 1 with a nice 18 round magazine, a little, uh, I don't even know what it's called, little single shot pistol, and then a nice uh, semi automatic blaster called the Stockade with 40 rounds. Uh, this little lot sold for this little lot sold for total price paid by the customer $39.33. And since, because of the size of this, we'll use a 16 by 12 by 8 box again. down in there oh actually demolisher might not be a good fit oh actually yeah we can do it like that Get our ammo in there. Extra blaster. Put another layer here. Put in our stockade and our magazine. Void fill layer. Boy, fill it a little bit with that. Maybe another one. Packing peanuts here. Okay. That should be good enough for Nerf guns. Another five pounder. Put a five on it, and uh, it was a two and one. I'll put two and one. So, how'd you like my shipping portion of the video? Uh, so now I've got. I just got this. This is. I got this at the thrift store for fifty bucks. It's a really nice uh, shelving system here. And I got my shipping supplies there, and then I got a shipping area. And then, so now the table where I used to do shipping and photographing, and I was just dedicated to a photograph backdrop. I got a, the whole table to photograph stuff. Got my JVC boombox over here. Got this shelf lined up here with all my toys. Got my insane amount of Nerf stuff over here. I'm ready to go. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, I sold this Lord of the Rings CD set. This is nice because it's gonna ship media mail. So total price paid by the customer, $27.97. So we'll get that shipped out media mail. Here's one of the smallest boxes I have right now. Already got some void fillers in here. Just gonna go ahead and utilize those. little packing peanut thing on top should secure it pretty good too on the top yeah I don't think that's going anywhere oh, it's even got a nice fragile logo on it already not that I would need to do that necessarily but hey might as well use it Some
some old labels on here. If you want to be extra precautious. Three pounder. And media mail, so it'll only be three or four bucks, so not bad. Okay, I put together another original nest lot. I refurbished this nest, uh, cleaned the controls up, made sure they were good, and cleaned uh, a lot of uh, 10, 12 games or 10 games? One, two, three, uh, 10 games. Uh, some pretty good titles too. We got Chippendales Rescue Rangers, Super Mario 3, Pac-Man, Super Mario Brothers, Rad Racer 2, RC Pro-Am, Excite Bike. So pretty cool lot. And then I've got aftermarket uh, AB cables and power adapter. And so this unit, I prepped up two controllers for it. And here's the system. So, so whenever I sell a nest, it's something I'm passionate about pretty much. So I include a pack in. I don't really normally put any, any kind of invoice or pack in in any of my sales, but for uh, the Nintendo I do, I put it, I'll read it out here. It says, congratulations on your decision to get nostalgic with a vintage NES system. I got my first NES back when I was in the second grade in the eighties. Gaming popularity today is all because of this iconic system. Remember that the games I have sent you have been opened, cleaned, and the contacts were polished and then cleaned again. This will ensure that everything works as perfectly as possible. Keep in mind, however, that this is a vintage system over 30 years old. If a game seems to not boot up properly, then take the game out and reinsert it and try again. Also keep in mind that any other games that you might get need to be properly cleaned before inserting them into the system. It does not matter how much cleaning and refurbishing was done on the NES if you put dirty games into it. If you received a zapper, remember that the only they only work on old CRT televisions. Modern LCD flat screen televisions are not the same technology and do not work with the zapper. Of course, this system I'm not including the, the zapper. And finally, I truly hope you enjoy this classic system and games and it inspires you to be a Nintendo collector. Contact me on eBay with any questions or concerns, Trent. So I always like to put that extra touch in there and I'll fold it in half and put it in here. Uh, put it on top of the console because I'm going to actually wrap the console with the uh, bubble wrap. Here's a nice sheet of bubble wrap. And then I just fold these because it's not going to be able to move around side to side in there. So we got that prepped. And the games, I like to uh, wrap them. So we got two stacks of five. Since I took the time to refurbish the console and clean up all the games, even though the games aren't in the most pristine condition and the console and everything shows signs of wear it's and everything like that, I like to make it sort of like as close as possible to maybe like what it would be like if you're in the 1980s to open a Nintendo, you know, out of the box. So I'm going to put all this stuff in the 16 by 12 by 8 box, which makes does a really good imitation of a Nintendo console box as far as the dimensions. And so we got two game bricks. So I will take another. Oh, that's a pretty good chuck. Bubble wrap. So I got my console with the the uh, letter, and I'm gonna face the buttons, the the front of the console inside. 
And that takes up a pretty good chunk of the box right there. Then we got our bricks of games that should fit in over here. So we got that. And uh, figure out where we want to put these. You see, uh, this guy almost goes at the top of the box, but it should still be fine. Then I keep my controls. I do like, a, I don't wrap them up. I just do like a nice little uh, kind of flat laying roll. So I like to keep those nice too. So this one got messed up, so I'll redo it. So I hold the controller like this and I just let the, the cord naturally lay down on itself. Keep in mind, I'm pretty passionate about this stuff, it being original Nintendo, so it's not necessarily something you have to do. Put a couple of void fill, a couple of void fill, bubble peanut, uh, peanuts, and then layer of bubble wrap on the top. So that thing is solid, does not move in there. Nothing does. So then the final touch is I like to I like to make this box like a box that you could reuse, basically that's used to store the console and not just a throwaway box. So first I'll seal the box. And then I'm actually gonna, I've already done it on the bottom side. I've taped it basically almost all, all the way on the bottom to where it's nice and shiny all, all the way. So I'm gonna do the same to the top. So eight pounds, I'm not gonna mark on the box. Uh, and yeah, refurbished Nintendo set. 10 games, two controllers, console with a, kind of like a thank you letter with a few instructions. Eight pounder, and we'll get that shipped out. Total price paid by the customer, 138.66. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, uh, thanks for dropping in. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, or just leave a comment in the comment section to say hi. I always appreciate that. Or if you want to give an idea for a, a video, that would be great too. You can leave that in the comment section. Always appreciate that as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good day.